Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to the 200th episode of Music News Roundup. Yes, I can't believe that we have hit 200 episodes. This show here was the first show, first series I created on my channel about four years ago. And I can't believe not only is it still going, but we are passing the 200th episode. And better than that, I just passed 20,000 subscribers. So having a milestone of a week here and a few weeks earlier, I passed 5 million views on this channel. Thanks to you guys for watching, being a part of it. I really do appreciate it. And lots of love goes out to you for all of that great stuff. Do check back for more and more stuff that I will continue to do here on this channel. But for now, we got all the best music news collected together for you from this past week. Music news on or related to Slayer, Van Halen, Guns N' Roses, Foreigner, Jethro Tull, The Beatles, Crowded House, Helix, and so much more. So stick around for all of that. Before we get started, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do, because then you're going to stay up to date on everything. Leave a comment, hit like, all that stuff uh, will support the channel, and I would greatly appreciate it. But let's dive into some killer music news. That's what we're here for. That's what we love. And there's some major news out this week here. We got thrash metal legends Slayer reuniting after five years, uh, despite them having played their final show show in November of 2019 and repeatedly saying it's over. They would never reunite, including Tom Araya saying that uh, he was done with music entirely. Uh, you know, Kerry King doing a solo album, all that sort of stuff. The other guys doing their things. But Tom Araya said he was out. They are now back. They have booked two festival performances, Riot Fest, which takes place on September 20th to 22nd, and Louder Than Life from September 26th to 29th. Uh, the band says this isn't a tour, so they're not going back on the whole Final Farewell tour, but they have booked a few dates here. Um, you know, we'll have to wait and see what comes of this here. The lineup is the same as the Farewell tour, Tom Araya, Kerry King, Paul Bostoff, and Gary Holt. Long live Slayer, I say, and I hope it turns into more, not just more live performances, but I would really like some new music from them. They didn't give us a final album at the end. Maybe now we'll get that. Who knows? But either way, Slayer's back. Okay, Jethro Tull has been, you know, having a resurgence the last few years, two to three years. They released two studio albums back to back, The Zealot Gene in 2022 and Rock Flute in 2023. From the point of announcement of those, I think they were only like nine months apart. I mean, it was kind of a crazy thing how quick a turnaround it was. But we had waited 20 years for new studio material. So I was glad that they were sort of picking up the slack and, you know, churning out a bunch of new albums really quickly there. But now they've announced that uh, guitarist Joe Parrish James is leaving. He is leaving on good terms, though. This is so that he can go out and pursue his own projects. Taking over guitar duties, though, is Jack Clark, who has been a touring member with the band for the last two years. So at least the guitar playing spot is staying within the family. I am interested to see what kind of a flavor he will bring to the band and whether that, you know, will change from what we've been getting on these last couple albums here. But, you know, if it keeps uh, Ian Anderson happy and churning out new music, I'm all for it. Let's uh, keep the ball rolling for Jethro Toll. And in some Van Halen news, drummer Alex Van Halen says that he'll be releasing an autobiography on October 28th. This, for me at least, kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't know he was even working on one. The book is 384 pages long. Not a lot of information about it just yet, but I'm hoping at least it sheds some light on why there's no archival material being released. Um, you know, I want to know what happened for the 14 years between three and a different kind of truth and why there were no albums released in that time period. Um, yes, I've heard all the, you know, news stories and things that are out there and point of view from Eddie Van Halen and all that sort of stuff. But it's always nice to get it from the horse's mouth. So this could be a pretty interesting um, biography that I would like to read and get a little more information. I really love the Sammy Hagar biography that went into all that sort of stuff. And I'll be glad now to get this one from Alex and, uh, you know, hear his side of things, but also hopefully get turned on to some new information as well. Right. In Beatles news, there are four separate biopics in development, one for each band member. John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, all getting their own biopics that are 
intended to intertwine and tie in together. So they're going to tell the story of the Beatles from four different perspectives. The director of this is Sam Mendes, who's known for the movies American Beauty, 1917, The Change James Bond films, Skyfall, and Spectre. So he's going to direct all four of these movies. They're expected to hit theaters in 2027, so we got a little while on this. But sort of the way we have these Marvel movies and um, other movies that, you know, all intertwine, they, they tell the bigger story. It looks like someone is going to try to do that now with music, at least with a band having four separate biopics on arguably the biggest band ever and the biggest individual members ever. Um, who could they do that next on? I don't know, but they already did the spinoff, or not the spinoff, but we've got the Freddie Mercury pick. Maybe we can get one from Brian May. I don't know if we could do all the members there, but anyways, this will be an interesting thing. If it's successful, you can bet lots of other bands will jump on this. Um, in other movie biopic news, famous director Ridley Scott is in talks right now to direct a Bee Gees biopic. Uh, negotiations are with Paramount Pictures, so major studio, lone surviving member Barry Gibb will be an executive producer on it. I have to say, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of the Bee Gees, but Ridley Scott is attached to it because I like a lot of the movies that he does. Um, it could be interesting regardless of whether you're into the band or not. Uh, it could just be a great movie, uh, you know, music-related movie, if nothing else. All right, moving on. Ministry, who are gearing up to release Hopium for the Masses on March 1st, so next week, um, which is going to be their 16th studio album. We already have frontman Al Jurgensen talking about the next studio album. Uh, Ace Fraley was doing that. I kind of really hate that. It's like, stay on topic, guys. Wait at least until your new album drops before you start talking about the next album. But... He's claiming that the next album is going to be Ministry's last. He thinks they're at a good place. It's time to stop while they're ahead. So I guess, okay, go ahead and announce it. Give us a big build up to it. Didn't say that the band is going to end, but he did say it was going to be their final album. Thing is, I don't put a lot of stock in that because they made this claim back in 2008 when they released the album Cover Up, claiming that was the last album. And yet they released five more studio albums since then. And if you count the 17th album they're talking about in the future, there would be six albums. So, you know, I think we have to take a grain of salt whenever the bands start talking about final and last and farewells and all that sort of stuff. I mean, look at Motley Crue, look at Slayer. We just talked about them. All these bands going back on the things that they say. And I'm okay with it. I really, I am. But at the same time, you know, as a fan who shells out and goes to these things thinking they legitimately will be the last, after a while, you're kind of like, I don't need to go see a farewell tour because the band will just come back down the road and I'll catch them at that time. Um, and I guess on that note, we'll move into some uh, concert news. Primus and Coheed and Cambria have announced a joint North American tour featuring 25 dates this summer from May until August. You can head over to either band's website to get more information. Alice Cooper has announced the Too Close for Comfort UK tour featuring Primal Scream as openers. I thought that was a pretty cool pairing right there. Shows are going to be taking place in October. Not a lot of them right now. I think it's four or five. Uh, check those out. Uh, and then we got former Guns N' Roses guitarist Gilby Clark has been joining Slash on stage at the last several shows that he's done. And they've been playing some GNR songs like Night Train. And I'm kind of hoping this leads to a bigger collaboration. Um, you know, there was always talks with Velvet Revolver that, you know, Izzy was supposed to be part of it. He didn't really want to. And Izzy uh, was supposed to be part of the reunion with Guns N' Roses, but, uh, you know, again, didn't really want to. And it was also a money issue, I think. But I always loved Gilby Clark, and I would love for him to be back with Guns N' Roses or even just to pair up with Slash and do a Gilby and Slash album or something. Uh, Gilby really doesn't get enough love. His, his band Kill for Thrills I thought was amazing. His solo album's amazing. Uh, so I really love to hear Gilby and Slash rip it up together, especially since all they ever did together was the Spaghetti Incident album, a covers album. I'd love to hear some new original material by those two. All right, album release schedule. We got seven things to touch on here. Glam metal band and sleaze rockers Vane have announced Disintegrate Together for March 1st. It's their eighth studio album featuring namesake Davey Vane. Four out of the five band members, though, are still original guys. And first single, Cold Like Snow, is out now. Now, I want to preference this with... 
I've seen dates for this album that were already in the past and should have come out. The newest one was March 1st, but I, I've also seen one for May 1st, and yet that's a Wednesday, so I think that date is incorrect. I think that the uh, person writing that and putting it together meant March 1st, but until this thing drops, the date could be up in the air. Right now, March 1st, so next week, maybe we'll see it, but I have yet to see a CD release announcement through like Amazon or anything, but maybe the band's website is selling it. Maybe it'll just drop streaming. So again, you know, keep an eye out for all the different mediums of this. Vane, if you don't know, are an amazing sleaze rock band. Highly recommend it. Okay, heavy metal band, Lords of Black, Mechanics of Pretty City for March 15th, sixth studio album. This is the band that features Ronnie Romero. Uh, it's being released on Frontiers Records. This is his band. This is not one of the ones that somebody has just hired him to sing. If you really want to know more about Ronnie Romero, check this band out here. On April 20th, Steve Conti, The Concrete Jangle, uh, former guitarist for 90s band Company of Wolves, another amazing, I still throw them in with the glam metal scene, but they're a straight up rock band. They were just part of that era. And uh, Steve Conti has also been guitarist with the New York Dolls and Michael Monroe's band. And he's got this new album here with 10 tracks. It's going to be released as part of Record Store Day. That's why I've got the April 20th date on it. I've not heard um, a, sort of like a more domestic or worldwide release of it, but I'm sure it's going to get one. Then we got Prague Supergroup Transatlantic on April 26th, dropping live at Morse Fest 2022, The Absolute Whirlwind, a seven disc box set featuring both live sets, so five CDs, two Blu-rays. The band features Neil Morse on vocals, former Spock's Beard frontman, Mike Portnoy on drum. I used to have to say former Dream Theater drummer, but now he is back with Dream Theater, so that's cool. We got Ronnie Stolt on guitar from Flower Kings and Pete True Waves on bass from Marillion. Another prog supergroup here, April 26th, six by six, Beyond Shadowlands, second studio album. This is the band that features Robert Berry on bass and vocals from the band Three that had Keith Emerson and um, Carl Palmer. Ian Crichton on guitar from Saga. And I always thought this was an odd mix, but it sounds great. Nigel Glockler on drums from Saxon joins in. Uh, this album will be released on Inside Out Music. First single, The Arms of a Word, is out now. And on May 10th, John and Twistle, The Ox Box, six CD box set featuring all of John's solo albums, plus 29 bonus tracks spread throughout all of that. Smash Your Head Against the Wall from 1971, Whistle Rhymes, 1972, Rigor Mortis Sets In, 1973, Mad Dog, 1975, Too Late the Hero, 1981, and The Rock, 1996, his final solo album. All right. And the last one we've got is New Wave Band Crowded House for May 31st, Gravity Stairs. This is their eighth studio album, follow-up to 2021's album, Dreamers Are Waiting, uh, which was their first album since reforming in 2020. The band still features two founding members. we got vocalist Neil Finn and bassist Nick Seymour. Their first single, Oh Hi, is out now. All right, moving into some sad, unfortunate news. We got Foreigner founding member and guitarist Mick Jones announcing that he has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, which affects the muscles and progressively gets work worse, making it harder for him to play guitar. This is the same disease that affects Glenn Tipton of Judas Priest. Um, and to a lesser degree, Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne has been diagnosed with it, but he has found uh, ways to sort of keep it at bay for a lot longer. I think he has a much more milder case that's only been getting worse uh, as he's gotten older. Um, this does, uh, you know, seem to be affecting musicians more and more. Uh, I'm not really sure why we're hearing about it so much. Uh, it is kind of a worrisome thing, though, with all these musicians coming out uh, with this now. Um, I will say this, that uh, in the 90s, I watched a friend of mine uh, go through, the, you know, a very similar uh, type of disease. It was a very rough road. There's no recovery from it. Uh, certainly, my thoughts and prayers are with Mick Jones and his family uh, during this time uh, while they're dealing with this uh, disease that he is now afflicted with. All right, and some more sad news. Helix drummer Greg Fitzhines 
has passed away at 68. He played for the band during their heyday from 82 until 96, and then again from 2009 until his death now in 2024. He played on nine different studio albums with the band. Uh, no word from the band just yet um, on who would be taking over for him, but uh, he's going to have some large shoes to fill coming in for Fritz. Rest in peace, Greg. You certainly will be missed, but not forgotten. Right, and some highlights of albums that are out today, Friday, February 23rd. I want to touch on six of them here. Where I was just talking about this, former Kiss guitarist Ace Fraley, 10,000 Volts, 10th studio album, produced and co-written by Steve Brown of Trickster. He was the other one talking about a new album, a covers album, Volume 3, uh, that will be coming out down the road. But he's been talking about that already for a month or so while promoting this one. We got former Motley Crue guitarist Mick Mars, the other side of Mars, dropping his debut solo album. First new music from him, or I should say first solo music from him um, in over 40 years, never having done that while been, being in the crew. Uh, former Iron Maiden vocalist Blaze Bailey, Circle of Stone, 11th solo album. Um, although I take that back, I think if I recall, because I sometimes film these things out of sequence, I believe that one has been pushed back, so... Uh, Disregard that one. That is coming out uh, next week, March 1st. Uh, what we do have still, though, today is uh, Motorhead Lost Tapes, the collection volume one through five, an eight CD box set of archival live recordings that were first released on vinyl during Record Store Day, but now getting a CD release. Volume five in the box set is exclusive to the box set. Van Halen live right here, right now on LP. This was pushed back from the week earlier, but uh, finally coming out now. It had a record store day release. It's getting a wider release here. Still no word on a CD reissue yet. And Rod Stewart has a new one called Swing Fever. It's a collaborative album with pianist Jules Holland from Squeeze. 13 covers of classic big band songs. So there you go. Okay, we don't have the six, but you get five of them. And uh, just, you know, put it on your, uh, your notes that that... Um, Blaze Bailey will come out next week, which is with Bruce Dickinson. So, hey, that's pretty cool in and of itself. Looking forward to getting two Iron Maiden frontman solo albums at the same time. And there you go. As I said, this was a pretty big episode number 200 with a lot of cool music news for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Check back every Friday for brand new episodes. This series is just going to keep going. I have no intention of retiring it. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it, staying up to date on all the best music news that happened from the past week. All right, everyone, take care, have a good one. And again, thank you all for the support that you've provided to my channel. Really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thanks.